thanks for coming. I'm very excited. Um, I've been chatting up with John Kenny, our author here for the evening, and I think we're in for a fun night. So welcome to Bear Pond Books for a reading of love poems for married people. If you're not married, you shouldn't be here. Just kidding. Just kidding. Oh. These poems are for everybody. And like as I said, we're welcoming author John Kenny. <laughs> love poems for married people is one of those rare gems. Hilarious and insightful, honest and accessible. Each time I open the book and discover a poem, I end up in tears from laughter, of course. Um, I'm so excited to hear him read some of these in person, and I hope he reads some of my favorites, like, Why Are You in the Shower with Me? <laughs> <laughs> What's the Plan for Dinner? Which I'm sure we've all heard. Um, you Reach for Me in the Middle of the Night. And the ever so honest couples counseling series. There's a whole series of these poems. Um, even just from the titles, you can see how many couples, married or not, or with kids or not, can relate. We do have copies of love poems for married people available at the front counter. And John will sign your books after the reading and QA. A few housekeeping items. The bathroom is located at the back of the store to the right. And the front door is now locked, and the back door, John thinks this is funny. You, <laughs> you have to stay no matter how bad it is. <laughs> the back door is open in case you need to leave. Um, if you haven't already, please mute or turn off your cell phones. I'd like to let you know about some upcoming Bear Pond events. Next week on Tuesday, April 9th, we host contributing editor of Harper's Magazine, Garrett Kieser, for a book launch of his debut book of poetry, When the World Pushes Back. And on Tuesday, April 16th, we have a reading from the anthology, Healing the Divide, Poems of Kindness and Connection. And then on Tuesday, April 23rd, we welcome an event called In Defense of Butterflies, a Migrant Justice Poetry Reading with Nico Amadar, Cynthia Dewi Oka, and Natalie Centers Zapico. You can find out about all of these events and more on our website, bearpondbooks.com, also on Facebook and Twitter at Bear Pond Books, or sign up for the newsletter. There is a sign-up sheet being passed around. Thank you. I'd like to thank Orca Media. They're here filming tonight's event, and Poem City Montpelier, for featuring this event in their program. You can pick up a program right here in this display. A little about our guest this evening. John Kenny is the author of Talk to Me and Truth in Advertising, which won the Thurber Prize for American Humor. He has worked for many years as a copywriter and has also been a contributor to the New Yorker magazine. Kenny lives in Brooklyn, New York, where we hope he is still happily married. Please help me welcome John Kenny. Okay. Um, can you can you hear me okay without the mic? Yeah. Is that okay? Um, uh, I see we've got some some kids in the audience tonight. Um, do you guys like bad words? Do your, your mom and dad pay you when they? I'll pay you. Um, <laughs> uh, so thank you, Samantha. Yes? If you're not going to use the amp, you can turn it off. Okay. The Is there feedback? No, uh, that's off. Oh, the, the, the amp. Let me turn the amp off. Does that help? Yeah, thanks. Great. Yeah. Yeah. No worries at all. Um, and if I'm ever talking too, too low, please uh, keep it to yourself. Um, so thank you to Samantha and to, to everyone at, at uh, uh, Bear Pond Books. Uh, and all of you for for coming out. It's uh, uh, you know it's a, it's great for me. Writers aren't asked out a lot. Um, to give you some sense, you know I live 317 miles from here, so uh, it was uh, you know it was it was nice to get the invite. As Samantha said, uh, my name is uh, Michelle Obama. Uh, and I'm thrilled to read from Becoming, uh, which sold more than 10 million copies. <laughs> So that's exciting. Um, I noticed that uh, in the time I had before the reading that um, you, you take your poetry seriously here in Vermont. 
uh, upcoming events, as Samantha said, uh, include Healing the Divide, Homes of Kindness and Connection, as well as uh, Garrett uh, Kieser's debut collection, The World Pushes Back. So I, I just, I feel um, I owe you a, um, a profound apology uh, for what you're, you're about to hear from, from me tonight. Um, my, uh, my work is like poetry, I think, in much the same way that um, uh, Burger King resembles farm to table. Um, so, uh, although I do think if you've looked at some of the, the poet photos, uh, I, I, I feel like I got the author poet photo right. Um, you'll see that in the photo I'm wearing a corduroy sports coat uh, and I'm staring sort of into the distance. Um, uh, the photo was taken in New York and what I was thinking about were two things. One is um, I badly needed a toilet and uh, uh, it was the corner of 18th and Broadway and a, a man who wasn't wearing pants had just uh, run by me. So uh, I'm going to read a few of the poems um, and uh, but I thought I, I I don't know if there are any writers here, or aspiring writers, or poets. Um, I think it's really important to communicate with your audience as best you can, and try to understand where they're coming from. So <clears throat> uh, I, I wanted to read a couple of reviews uh, from some adoring fans from uh, Amazon. Oh. <laughs> reads. Uh, and these are, these are actual reviews. Uh, this is from Kathy S. Uh, who titled her review, A Waste of Money. <laughs> uh, this book, and this is the quote, uh, this book was the worst. Uh, first of all, it's not poetry, it's a book of ramblings of unhappy married people. Uh, what they're saying is true, but a sad state. Um, we have been married for 47 years, very happily. Uh, even my husband thought this book was without merit. Maybe it's an age difference. I wouldn't waste my money on it. <laughs> this is from uh, Jax uh, at Goodreads. Could have been a library book. Um, uh, she titled her review, No Love in These Poems. Uh, based on the reviews, I expected the book to take an amusing look at marriage, uh, but at least contain some love, perhaps something my husband would enjoy reading, but there's nothing nice inferred. Uh, this was a complete waste of my time. Uh, my favorite was from, a, a, not a person, but the, the Russell Public Library. Uh, I, Russell is either in Kansas or upstate New York. Um, I, I imagine sort of the townspeople behind <laughs> someone typing furiously, you know, holding torches. Uh, and this, this is a direct quote. Um, uh, she titled it, I, I don't know why I thought it was a she, um, Hate Poems for Almost Divorced People. <laughs> um, it's a much more accurate title. Uh, and this is in all caps, the sentence, Hated this book so much, I feel sorry for the person who wrote it. What a sad way to be together. <laughs> I've been married for 20 years, and I realize marriage is not all butterflies and rainbows, a metaphor I don't love. <laughs> but this is ridiculous. If you want a book that is accurate to the title, don't get this one, it's crap. <laughs> so, uh, good times. Um, so, I just want to give you a tiny bit of background about the, the book. Uh, uh, as Samantha said, I've written a couple of novels, but um, uh, as with all of uh, good ideas I have, it was not mine. Um, it was someone else's. Um, so I've contributed to the New Yorker magazine uh, for a number of years, and I had written a piece uh, about three years ago called Valentine's Day Poems for Married People, uh, and it got passed around a fair amount, and it would sort of pop up on the New Yorker's website um, every Valentine's Day. And so last June, uh, I was at a cocktail reception at my, my publishers in New York. Uh, I don't do well at those kinds of things. I never seem to know anyone. Everyone sort of pairs off. And uh, it, it's one of those things where you have to wear a name tag. And I don't know whether it's because I'd had a couple of glasses of wine, but I, I thought it was like a, like a party game. And so I, I wrote on, on my name tag, uh, Virginia Woolf. <laughs> <laughs> the problem is that it's sort of in the new world. Uh, problem's not the right word. I, I think opportunity. But, but in the new world, <laughs> if you write that in, in sort of in Manhattan at a cocktail party, uh, people have to, you know, they can't assume I don't identify. <laughs> as Virginia Woolf. So, <laughs> seriously, they can't say, ah. Or they're, so they, it's, they're very respectful. So um, throughout the evening, people would come up and sort of squint and look at my uh, thing and say, it's very nice to meet you, Virginia. Uh, and so I'd be in conversation with them, and perhaps a friend of theirs would join, and they would turn and say, in all seriousness, I'd like you to meet Virginia Woolf. Um, and I asked where the closest lighthouse was. Um, <laughs> 
something about that. Um, <laughs> so uh, my at the party after the six or eight glasses of wine, my editor introduced me to a woman. Uh, I didn't read her. I should have read her name tag. And um, the woman said, um, my editor Sally said, John wrote Valentine's Day poems for married people. And the woman said, we should make a book of that. And I was like, that's funny. <laughs> and so the next day, my editor called and said, that was the head of Penguin Random House. She wants to make a book out of this. And she wants it soon. So uh, uh, I had six weeks uh, to put it together. Uh, and uh, that's while, it was 70 or so poems. And uh, while I was editing the novel, uh, and I had a day job, uh, and uh, two kids and a wife who decided that uh, last summer was the perfect time to get a, a dog. <laughs> uh, which is when I discovered this sort of a, this amazing uh, thing called Lexapro. And I don't know if you know that, that was, I would advise I uh, that. Um, so just in terms of, of, of writing this, um, I'm not a poet. I never aspired to be a poet. In high school, I went away for a month to Ireland in the spring, and it was raining, and I thought, I will be a poet. <laughs> and I wrote some stuff, and it didn't make any sense. Um, I, I have enormous respect for, for poets. I consider myself someone who was sort of poisoned in high school and college with being forced to read poetry. And um, I didn't get it. I think you have to come to it when you're ready, for me anyway. In much the same way when you read Shakespeare in high school and college, I mean, you, it, it's not meant to be read. It's meant to be experienced, right? So having to read the words, and then you see Kenneth Branagh do Henry V, and you're like, I get it now. I feel it now. And it's the same way for me with, uh, uh, you know, I, I was late to the game with Mary Oliver five years ago. I, you know, heard the summer day, and it was like, oh, I get it now. Um, what I do is a very different thing. But um, so I was reading. Uh, six, eight months ago uh, in the New York Times, the obituary of J.P. Don Levy, who wrote, among other things, The Ginger Man. Um, and I was struck by a quote from him in the obituary. He said, um, uh, it's on why he became a writer. <clears throat> and he said, um, one day, while innocently looking in the window of an old established cheese shop in London, the definition of what writing is all about hit me. Writing is turning one's worst moments into money. <laughs> so, I love that. Uh, so, the first noble truth of Buddhism is that life, and I think by extension marriage, uh, is suffering. Uh, the second, I think, should be to make fun of it, so that suffering. Uh, you know, sort of what's the point of this whole lunacy if we can't do that? Uh, the great Indian stand up comic uh, Mahatma Gandhi. Uh, once said, if I had no sense of humor, I would have long ago committed suicide. Mm -hmm. Charlie Chaplin said, to truly laugh, you must take your pain and play with it. Uh, and so with that, I will read a few of my incredibly insipid poems. And I take requests. Uh, this first one is called, uh, I Honor You and Our Love but I also lost track of time at a bar with my co-workers. <laughs> in France, saint cassette was once sacrosanct, a euphemism for rendezvous, for that thing that men and women do, close your ears. But we are not in France. We are here in Montclair, New Jersey, and it is well past seven, and I promised to be home at six. And yes, that's booze on my breath. The guys mm -hmm. and I had one, fine, three drinks after work, and apparently I have forgotten the milk and the bread, and the pasta, and the pull-ups, and the allergy medicine. Why are you dressed up? Wait, today is Valentine's Day? <laughs> it is important to note, as a very happily married man, I tried to write these all uh, as the woman is the girl. Very important to me that you know that. <laughs> In a conservative city like Montpelier. <laughs> this is called, Are You in the Mood? I am. Let's put the kids down. Have a light dinner. Shower. Maybe not drink so much. And do that thing I would rather do with you than anyone else lie in bed and look at our iPhones. <laughs> called Our Love. 
Our love is like the padlocks on the Pont des Arts in Paris. Thousands of locks, symbols of unbreakable love. Isn't that beautiful? <laughs> Apparently, though, all those locks are too heavy for the bridge. Did you hear this? I read it somewhere. The locks are weighing the bridge down. So you know what they're going to do? They're taking them off with bolt cutters and throwing them in the trash. Isn't that beautiful, too? <laughs> <laughs> so now the people aren't locked together anymore. They're free to maybe see other people. <laughs> I thought that was interesting. <laughs> this is why are you in the shower with me? <laughs> None of these based on personal experience. <clears throat> Did the bathtub shrink? <laughs> I ask because here we are, naked, showering together like we once did all the time. Remember, at the beginning, we would stand and talk, seals slipping by one another, a playful ease letting the other into the stream. Now, I'm not sure what you're doing in here. <laughs> I'm freezing. Your shampoo stinging my eyes. You just stepped on my foot. <laughs> For the love of Christ who flushed the toilet. <laughs> because I'm being scalded alive. <laughs> Get out now. It was a nice idea though, honey. <laughs> Could you close the door? <laughs> Again, they, they just come to me. <laughs> this is called, Is It Possible You Are Sending Me a Sexy Signal? <laughs> the kids are finally down, and you are looking at me in that way. Tease. Or are you just spacing out? Wait. Yep, you're just spacing out. <laughs> you unzip your skirt and your baggy underpants ride way, way up on your head. How old are those anyway? <laughs> you pull on some sweatpants and a t-shirt and a sweater and a fleece, and I <laughs> am not able to make out any contour of your body <laughs> at all. I think you are sending me a signal <laughs> in the way that married couples send each other signals. <laughs> And just so we're clear, you're signaling, I'm going to call my sister and order sushi. You should do something too. This is called uh, at the kitchen sink. <laughs> I was feeling fondness for you as you gave me a, shul a shoulder massage at the sink. <laughs> what a small, lovely surprise. And then you cupped my boobs and made a wah-wah noise. <laughs> and in an instant, I felt disgust, sadness, and regret. <laughs> This is called Let's Spice Things Up. That's what you said when we were ordering in the Mexican restaurant. And I said, oh my God, are you serious? And you smiled and said, totally. Spicy is nicey, you said. In a weird accent. <laughs> Laughing, but also a little embarrassed at the weird accent thing. And I said, it would have to be with a woman though, not a guy. And you said, what are you talking about? <laughs> and I said, aren't you talking about having a threesome? <laughs> you get a look on your face sometimes, and you got it here. And you said, I was talking about getting the mole. <laughs> and maybe some pico de gallo. <laughs> to which you said, oh. To which I said, oh, OK. That's a good idea, too. <laughs> Uh, I don't know if I'm going to read the next one. Some of our, some of our audience. Um, Make stand outside. No, no, no. no, no. I'll read the, um, uh, I have to give credit to my editor, Sally Kim. Uh, um, 
I had originally written a very, very, very long, tedious poem called Couples Counseling, and she said, uh, uh, break it into four and sort of uh, put it at different sections in the book. So I'll just read them all together. So, so this is Couples Counseling Part One. <clears throat> the couples therapist urges us to repeat what each other has just said. Okay? So I hear you saying that I am a terrible husband, man, and human being. <laughs> Hold on, Roger, the therapist says. That's not what Amy said. Yes, but that's what I heard. Okay, but what she actually said was that she wanted you to listen more. Let's try to repeat the actual words and not our interpretation. <laughs> Sorry, I wasn't listening. <laughs> but I don't say that part out loud. Unfortunately, what I do say is, do you have Wi-Fi here? <laughs> uh, this is Couples Counseling Part 2. I acknowledge that I shouldn't have asked about Wi-Fi and I acknowledge that I wasn't listening to or respecting Amy. I would also like to acknowledge that I hate the word acknowledge. <laughs> this is what I'm thinking about. Th sorry, this is what I'm talking about, Amy says to the therapist, who then asks Amy to acknowledge her feelings by speaking directly to Roger. Fine, Roger, I'm hearing that from the tone of your voice you're exasperated and don't mean your acknowledgement. <clears throat> I don't, I say out loud, which is a surprise as I thought I was only thinking it. <laughs> Dickhead, you say. <laughs> Amy, the therapist said, his name is Roger. <laughs> really, Amy asks, because he looks to me like a dickhead. <laughs> <laughs> um, mm. You reach for me in the middle of the night. Should I read that? So how are you with the kids? And the I'm gonna I'm gonna wait on that. Oh, I'm gonna wait on that. Yeah. Oh, let's try. No, 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 no. This is all this is kid friendly stuff. You guys should buy a copy. <laughs> Give it to classmates. <laughs> <laughs> like it. Um, uh, I'm gonna find another one. Um, This is called, Upon Reflection, I Wish We Had Left My Company Holiday Party a Little Earlier. <laughs> we rode the elevator down with my boss, my new boss at the job I really like. You, my husband, drunk, him not so much. You stood so close to him, your elevator, your back to the elevator door, he looked uncomfortable. I cringed. Lovely party, he said to you, trying to pull himself back into the elevator wall. You're a lovely party, you said, <laughs> which made no sense. <laughs> then you hugged him, put your head on his shoulder, and he said, oh my, while you sang softly, when a man loves a woman. <laughs> so there's that. Uh, I'll read one more. Where is that poem? Uh, apologize. It's called What's for Dinner. This is called What's the Plan for Dinner. <clears throat> like swallows to Capistrano, you call me each afternoon from work. Quick point on the swallows thing. <laughs> I'm not saying swallows make calls. I guess I just mean they perform on schedule the same damned ritual. Hey, what's up, you say, distracted, reading an email. <laughs> what's the plan for dinner? <laughs> I don't know, I say, looking at a purse on the fossil website. I'm at work, like you. Chicken, you ask, toggling over to the body issue of ESPN.com. Sure, I say, having already forgotten about what we're talking about. Can you get ice cream, you ask, clicking over to Huffington Post? So I'm getting the dinner then, I say, enhancing a picture of Ryan Reynolds. I can get it, you say, drained of energy as if you've just received news of a death. We have leftover pasta, I say, picturing Ryan Reynolds naked in a Four Seasons hotel room. I hate leftovers, you say, swallow-like, so predictable. I bet Ryan Reynolds isn't predictable, except I say that last part out loud. <laughs> uh, do one more. Um, this is 
called Mother's Day. I didn't know who Marie Kondo was, author of the international bestseller, The Life-Changing Magic of Tidying Up. What a funny, funny Mother's Day gift that was. <laughs> how we should fold clothes with love. How we should keep only things that spark joy. You know what doesn't spark joy for me a lot of times? You. <laughs> keep you. And the card was a thoughtful touch. You know what you are, it said, on the wacky cover? A mother. And you signed it, your husband, Russell. That certainly sparked something for me. <laughs> Thank you. Any questions? Comments? Do you give advice? <laughs> I try desperately not to. What's the, what's the question? Well, my wife has a birthday in a week, and the question is, is this a good present for her? <laughs> this is a spectacular present. <laughs> yeah, no, I would definitely, I would definitely get, I would get this and a real book of poetry. <laughs> get Mary Oliver and John Kenny, two names that have never, ever been said before. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have a question? Mm -hmm. What grade are you in? First. You are? Are you doing any writing now in school? Yeah. Do you a like? Lot. Is it hard? Yeah. I think it's really hard. <laughs> it's tiring, right? Is it kind of fun sometimes? Yeah. What do you like about it? Mm, I don't know. <laughs> Do you get to just imagine anything you want? I kind of like that part. Yeah, sort of. Do you know what's tough? Criticism. <laughs> <laughs> Don't let anyone tell you. <laughs> yeah, he had his little book on her before we, right before we started. Really? Yeah, he was, wow, <laughs> good for you. Um, State Capitol. You want to talk about your next project? Sure, yeah. Um, uh, I, I was very fortunate with this. It, I think it came out at the right time, and uh, 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 fellow from uh, All Things Considered, Ari Shapiro, took some interest in it and was kind enough to interview me. And if you ever wondered about the uh, uh, power of NPR, um, they aired the interview on a Friday afternoon before Valentine's Day at about, it's drive time, I guess, you know, 5, 5.30, yeah. something like that. My wife and I were meeting some friends for dinner. And not that I, you know, check Amazon every 15 minutes to see where the book is ranked. It was ranked at 6,000 or something, 6,500, which is, you know, not great. 3,000 by. Yeah. So uh, we go out to dinner, we get home at about 10, and I check Amazon, and the book's number five <laughs> on Amazon. And I was like, no, no, no. refresh. And based on that, it was, it was astounding how many people from NPR had just gone and uh, but I have written to those women who hated the book <laughs> sent them their money back. So. Any poets here? Fledgling poets? Really? I'm embarrassed to be in your company. Real poets. <laughs> I tried to make mine at least look like poets, if not sound. I'll well, stay around till Friday and come to my reading. I'd love that. Yeah. Wow. What, what is your name? George. Oh, George. Yeah. Well, that's very exciting. Everyone should come back for George's reading. And, and Rosa Castellano. Okay. That's very exciting. This is one of the rare book readings where I'm, I'm, um, I'm pushing another author. <laughs> it gives you some sense of how bad my poetry is. Um, any questions at all? Yes. What's your day job? So I'm imagining yes. that a poem is like a funny thought, or, yeah. or not, I mean, not necessarily a funny thought, but a thought that you have, and yeah. you just sort of flesh it out a little bit, whereas like a, an essay or a book is lots of thoughts all put together. But is, am I on the right track at all? Is yeah. It, is there, is Some, there a different process, or I, what's it? I tend to be um, a, a burst writer. Um, I will certainly try to sit down and uh, slog it out, but um, the good days for me are when it's just bleh, right? And whether that's just a poem, some of them sort of fully formed, that's not most of the time. Most of the time it's, uh, you have an idea, 
and then you see in your head it's really funny, and with the distance from there to there, you're like, that's, wow, that's terrible. Why didn't that come out? The words just aren't working, and um, this was much harder than I thought it would be. You know, it's just a few words on a page, but it was, I think that's what makes poetry so sort of amazing to me, is that it finds, the real poetry finds the, uh, the ineffable, right? Like, it, it's like, oh, I felt that. I, it, that touches something. For these, for, you know, I find funny very hard to do, and it's just, it's the number of drafts to get these right um, was, it was, it was hard. Uh, it was also a, it was a crazy six weeks to get it done. Um, as for uh, the, because I also have this uh, novel, which is sort of going the other way down the Amazon list. Um, uh, that's, that's, you know, I had an idea in my head. It was a father-daughter story, and I wrote the ending. It was the first thing I did was write the ending. And then, um, then you map it out. Um, yeah, the novel thing, I would not advise it. It's, it's painful, but um, but I, it's oddly enjoyable because you live with these people for a couple of years, and they um, they I mean it sounds cliche, but they do surprise you. They tend to write themselves. You know, when you know when you sort of are into the characters, they write their own dialogue in a way. You know, on those good moments where you write a scene where you're like, oh, that feels right. That feels right. Uh, these, these poems, you said you like to do bursts. You stick with one until you get it clean? No, no. I, I stuck with it if it felt good. If it was starting to feel bad and not funny, because there's just nothing worse to me. Like, if it's just not funny. I mean, I, I, I probably wrote 110, and we killed a lot. <coughs> A lot um, because they're just. I dated a a comedian, and <coughs> she said she had a rule for you know for writing, and she said if I, it makes me laugh out loud, it's funny, but but if I, I say to myself oh, that's funny, that's, that's good, it's just you've got to. And there were there were plenty of these uh, that just were sort of. <laughs> and, and, you, and so you were working with an editor as you're going through the drafts? Uh, mostly my wife, who's a super tough audience, a very, very, very dry sense of humor, to, you know, does not suffer fools, um, and, uh, except for me. Um, but she, she was a great audience. She was really good because she, we would, we have this little space on our roof deck that we'd go up last summer and would sit there with coffee in the morning and she would, you know, I sit there like a small dog, like waiting for her reaction. <laughs> and she's just like, no, no, no. And I trust her a thousand percent. So she's the audience. And so she's just, paint me a picture, she would say. I'm just like, paint your own picture. Um, but, but I did, I, I dedicated, the, I don't know if you guys have, the, the yeah. dedication, yeah. It's, yeah. It's, it's, uh, Bunch of hyper strikes. Uh, it says for Barbara. That's there's a line through that. Karen, line through that. Pam, line through that. Miss France, there's a line through that. Uh, Claudine, there's a line through that. Ramon, uh, there's a line through that. And then to listen. Uh, but I did write a. It's not a real poem, but I did at the very end to surprise her. I wrote something that was not funny. So. And her lawyers say she really likes it. <laughs> <laughs> Did you see the uh, Random House, uh, the head of Random House again after it came out? You said you had met yeah, I haven't. I got an, a, a very lovely email uh, from her uh, saying I was only kidding. <laughs> Here, Virginia. <laughs> 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 uh, and the about driving in the car together? <laughs> uh, there is, there is one, uh, there is one called "Our Love Is Tested in Traffic." Oh, <laughs> yeah, but we should exchange emails because um, they have uh, asked me to write a follow-up uh, that would come out next December called "Love Poems for People with Children." Oh, we'd be so, happy to share some of our moments. <laughs> 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 <at> Mac.com. <laughs> Oh, we'll have to go through an editorial process before yeah. we hand them over. Yeah. <laughs> well, these, these two seem perfect. 
You know, not. Today, today, today I, I was driving back from a resort with a lieutenant governor who was very tired, so I, I offered to drive him. And on the way back, we had an argument about it. He said, you don't take direction well. I said, well, I take my own direction well. OK, so go to sleep. I'll drive. I'll just write this off. <laughs> <laughs> just write, yeah, write this off and send it to my guy. Um, if there's anything else? Have you, have you ever thought about doing comedy? Because this is this is like a hop, skip, and a jump from a comedy routine. Um, you know, all, you, all you need to do is is like n tie it together and in, in a narrative that comes back to a punchline. And stand up's a really. I have friends who do it, and uh, I've done some open mic nights at like Caroline's and stuff. And it's it, it's fun-ish. It's you know it's hard. It's really hard. Um, a high off, it's pretty cool, but. Uh, I like being alone in a room with a cup of coffee and my dog, and, uh, <laughs> writing. Um, I'd, I'd write for people, but uh, I like the writing part. It's a lot of fun isn't the right word, but I enjoy It's what I'm supposed to do, I guess. I like it. Um, so, but thank you, I think. <laughs> if I can go again, I, my comment is, <clears throat> you know, you keep um, sort of denigrating your work in comparison to, quote, real poets, and I know that's it's part of that is, is the shtick that you're doing. But I don't think you need to do any denigration. I think this is real poetry. What do I know? But it feels nice like to that so. to me. And it's really good poetry. Well, thank you. You're very kind to say so. And, and uh, honestly, it's, it's, I mean, I make a point of saying it at the end, I, I, in the acknowledgments, um, I don't have a deep uh, well of knowledge about poetry. Um, I mean, I studied English literature in college, but I, you know, I came to poetry re really late in life. Um, probably around the time I had kids, where I grew up, and sort That's of not late in life, by the way. Things <laughs> began to. You saw the other side of things. Mm -hmm. You saw the, the preciousness of things, and things became. Uh, it's like someone. It's like the someone adjusted the aperture. Right on a camera, or a little. It's like when you go to the, the better or worse thing that the optometrist does. It seems like such a subtle thing, but the acuity is so different. And uh, you know, uh, it's it's uh, it's it's a very different thing. I need a long runway. I need a lot of words, and I think the best poets it, don't. So uh, thank you for the compliment, but. Um, you know, the people I thank at the end who, you know, matter to me, the Seamus Haney's of the world and David White's and uh, uh, Mary Oliver's and, uh, you know, that's, that's, you know, that's Major League Baseball. I can't, I can't hit those pitches, so. To mix my medical list. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that's why I can't do it. <laughs> no one has asked if these are based on my wife. And that's, this is the first reading I've had where no one has said that. Why did they say your <laughs> <laughs> Amazingly, except for baggy underwear. But she's like, that's your problem, man. It's not mine, it's yours. So the, these are just... She read, she read and approved every one. She read and approved every... I, there's no book without my wife. Did you avoid doing the cuts of that? Because you knew that. Oh, no, no. I mean, like, no. I mean, it's like, not funny point. unless it's true or mildly painful-ish. Right? Yeah. I mean, it's not, it's not funny, otherwise. That, otherwise, it's sort of, eh. so. so you mentioned a day job. Yes, yeah. yeah. Um, um, I have worked for many years as a copywriter in advertising, so my apologies. Um, <laughs> yeah, so I, I've worked uh, in, in New York at some uh, big ad agencies, and uh, so, uh, I do that, uh, and I was doing it full time for a long time. But it was—it's incredibly time-consuming, uh, and uh, so I'm taking this year to um, sort of write some other stuff. And have been wildly unproductive in the first three months of this year. <laughs> now that I have the time. Uh, I do. Yeah, it, it, yeah. It's it's the first novel. Uh, <coughs> It's called Truth in Advertising. Uh, it's based an, in an ad agency, um, but it's largely about a, a terribly mixed, mixed up, dysfunctional family. Um, 
it's hilarious. Uh, <laughs> well, I would read it. <laughs> so, uh, so, yeah, so I do that. And, uh, and I've got, I started kind of late, so I've got uh, little kids. And, Oh, this guy's already bored. He's just like wandering around. <laughs> That's it. Um, any other? I can't thank you enough for coming out. It means a lot to me, and uh, I hope I hope you enjoy it. Thank you. Thank you.